Who's stronger, Super Sonic or Super Saiyan Goku? Wait, what about the seven Chaos Emeralds versus the seven Dragon Balls? Who copied who? I'm sure these are questions you've encountered if you're a fan of either Sonic the Hedgehog or Dragon Ball, two franchises with a similar target demographic and therefore tons of overlap in their respective fandoms. Why is that though? What do Sonic and Dragon Ball have anything in common with one another? One's a video game and the other one is an anime and manga franchise. I'd like to talk about the similarities between Sonic and Dragon Ball, intentional and unintentional, and maybe clear up a few misconceptions. And look, I'm definitely not the first person to make a video like this, but seeing as I've been a fan of both franchises since I was a little kid, it's something I've always been very passionate about. Actually, my buddy Geekdom101 has done a similar Sonic and Dragon Ball video all the way back in 2017 that I helped him write, and I also made the thumbnail for it as well. However, a lot has happened since 2017 with both franchises, so I kind of feel like making a little update on it. These are the similarities between Sonic the Hedgehog and Dragon Ball. Let's go! <laughs> So, first things first, Dragon Ball is a manga that began being published in Weekly Shonen Jump on November 20th, 1984. Son Goku is a powerful and naive child with a mysterious monkey tail, who embarks on adventures with his friends to get stronger. He takes heavy inspiration from Sun Wukong, the Monkey King from Journey to the West, even going as far as being named after him. Eventually, as the manga goes on, Goku learns that he actually belongs to an alien race called the Saiyans, or Saiyans, and he was originally sent to Earth as a baby to conquer it. Well, that is until he hit his head and lost his malevolent nature. As an adult, Goku took to the stars and eventually traveled to planet Namek to use the seven Dragon Balls to bring his fallen friends back to life. Then after losing his best friend Krillin to the evil overlord Frieza, Goku turns into a Super Saiyan. His hair turned yellow and upright, and he became even stronger than he already was. And ever since then, Super Saiyans have been a huge part of what remained of Dragon Ball's story, and the look has even gone on to become instantly recognizable all throughout the world. Now, what about Sonic? Who is he exactly? Sonic is a blue anthropomorphic hedgehog whose main superpower is speed. He first debuted in Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis video game console back in 1991. The game was a huge success for Sega, so of course they had to be quick and make a follow-up. Once Sonic the Hedgehog 2 rolled around in late November 1992, Sonic had a new ability that allowed his fur to become yellow, stand upright, and he became stronger than he already was. Sounds just like what happened with Goku from Dragon Ball, right? Who copied who? Let's rewind the clock a bit. Sonic's first game released in June 1991, and his second game was released in November 1992. Goku first transformed into a Super Saiyan in the Shonen Jump issue published on March 19, 1991, three months before Sonic 1 first released. Sonic 1 had been in development since early 1990, and Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama has been famous for kind of just writing as he went along week by week. The term Super Saiyan was first mentioned by name in December 1988, at the beginning of the Z portion of the story, and well before Sonic was even a twinkle in Sega's eye. So yeah, given those dates, it's pretty clear by now that Dragon Ball did it first, with the super powerful blonde spiky hair transformation. So why do some people wonder who did it first? Well, in Japan, where both Sonic and Dragon Ball have originated, Super Saiyan Goku precedes Super Sonic by a year and eight months. The reason why some people debate who copied who is because Super Sonic had exposure in Western territories well before Super Saiyans, or even Dragon Ball Z as a whole for that matter, due to the anime not being dubbed into English until the late 90s. So, we all know by now that Super Sonic and Super Saiyan Goku both share a lot of similarities, but how are they different? One of the biggest differences between them is their source of power. Goku is able to transform all on his own using his own power. Super Sonic, on the other hand, can only transform by harnessing the power of the Seven Chaos Emeralds, which is yet another big comparison in both fandoms. Just like the Seven Dragon Balls, there are seven Chaos Emeralds, but both do completely different things. 
The Dragon Balls are pretty straightforward. If you gather the correct amount, usually seven if we're going by Earth's and Namek's respective sets, a dragon will spawn if correctly summoned and grant a certain amount of wishes. They're capable of granting most wishes, and that's why they're often wanted by villains, usually for eternal life or youth, usually to go back to their prime. Whereas the heroes usually tend to use them to undo the atrocities done by villains, such as wishing people that have been killed back to life. Or sometimes it's for completely silly reasons, such as getting a bigger ass. The Chaos Emeralds are a bit more mysterious, but they're very powerful, and everyone is after them for that very reason. They don't grant wishes, but they can create miracles based on how they're used. Overall, their abilities are a bit more diverse. From what we've seen in the Sonic series, one emerald is enough to simply power a machine, or even warp space and time by using an extremely powerful technique called Chaos Control. So ultimately, it varies greatly on what one emerald can do, depending on the story that needs to be told. In Sonic Superstars, each Chaos Emerald now has its own unique ability. The blue emerald will create several clones of the character using it for one big mass attack. The red emerald will turn the character into a powerful bullet. The green emerald will spawn a huge vine that can allow the character to reach higher areas. The yellow emerald slows down time. The purple emerald will allow you to see hidden items and platforms. The cyan emerald gives you water powers. And the white emerald grants an extra move for the wielder. Unlike the Dragon Balls, all of the Chaos Emeralds don't need to be completely gathered as a set to be useful. Each one is incredibly powerful and useful on its own. Again, given the user knows what to do with it. I think some confusion may be caused here because Sonic and some other characters need all seven of them in order to reach the minimum amount of power necessary to turn into their super forms. But because they may need all seven, like I said, doesn't mean they can't be used individually. Alone, they're not useless. Their power can still very well be harnessed, even if you just have one emerald. You just won't have anywhere near enough power to have a character transform. Dragon Balls, on the other hand, are pretty much useless individually unless you have the complete set. Each one doesn't have its own unique ability or anything like that. One of the biggest things people point to, though, is how there's seven emeralds and seven Dragon Balls. Originally, there were only six Chaos Emeralds in the first Sonic game, but a seventh one was added with Sonic 2, which is why Sonic couldn't turn Super in Sonic 1. After usage, the Chaos Emeralds also scattered just like the Dragon Balls. Personally, I think there are just too many coincidences here for this to not be intentional, and even if the Chaos Emeralds became more distinct over time compared to the Dragon Balls, they both have become icons to each series in a similar fashion. Villains are out to gather them for malicious purposes for their own selfish gain, and it's up to the heroes to stop them by collecting all seven stones first. As I kind of hinted at earlier, there are different sets of Dragon Balls. There are seven on Earth, seven on Namek, seven Super Dragon Balls, seven Black Star Dragon Balls, and two Cerulean Dragon Balls. There are, of course, other sets of Dragon Balls in other media, but these are the main ones. There are also different sets of Chaos Emeralds. The seven from Sonic's universe, along with the seven Super Emeralds, and the seven Soul Emeralds from Blaze's dimension. There's also a bigger Chaos Emerald called the Master Emerald, which is tied to the seven Chaos Emeralds and is able to nullify their power. And it's also very powerful on its own, too. There isn't a Master Emerald equivalent for the Dragon Balls, though. Something else to note is that, depending on the entry for Sonic, sometimes there's a different set of stones that do different things, usually equaling the same number as well, such as the Time Stones from Sonic CD. These don't possess the same kind of power as the Chaos Emeralds, though. Even though Chaos Emeralds can do it too, Time Stones specialize in controlling time, and aren't strong enough for Sonic to harness power from them in order to use a super form. Now, there are other stones and objects in the Sonic universe, but I consider them far too different for them to be comparable to anything from the Dragon Ball universe. In Sonic the Fighters, there were also eight Chaos Emeralds instead of seven. But for the longest time, this wasn't even considered canon at all. However, a recent IDW spin-off comic called Fang the Hunter is currently in the process of explaining it. If the Eighth Emerald is the real deal after all, that'll make the Chaos Emeralds a bit different from the Dragon Balls going forward. Either way, whether it's seven or eight, most people are familiar with the seven Chaos Emeralds, and therefore will continue to compare them to the seven Dragon Balls. 
Besides the super transformations and the seven magical stones, fans of both often point to the similarities between characters from each series. Sonic and Goku are the most obvious. Both rock a big pointed hairstyle and are the main characters of each series. They're usually positive and carefree, and both have their own special interests that they love to indulge in. Other than that, I'd say the two are pretty different. Sonic is more of a hero, always wanting to do what's right, even if he's a bit snarky. Goku, while a good person, isn't exactly what I'd call the textbook definition of a hero. Throughout Dragon Ball, he acts in his own self-interest, even if it means knowingly putting his friends, family, and the whole entire world in danger. Part of this can be attributed to him being a Saiyan, which is an alien race that has a penchant for fighting. He's got a naive, childlike disposition, which, on top of him being a Saiyan, is more prone to put his and his loved one's well-being in jeopardy. Sonic, in comparison, usually puts others before himself, and has more of a protective instinct. Unlike Goku, it's not often he puts those he loves in direct danger for his own fulfillment. Goku, mostly in his adulthood, allows the situation to get as critical as possible before taking care of the problem. Like allowing his opponents to get as strong as they possibly can. Sonic, on the other hand, has a record of trying to stop his opponents from getting stronger. Like chaos. Still, both have saved the world multiple times, and that makes them heroes, whether it's conventional or not. Next is Shadow and Vegeta. These two get compared a lot. Both share the same respective species and race, and are often friendly rivals to the main characters. They have a serious, brooding disposition, especially in comparison to Sonic and Goku. They both started off as bad guys turned anti-hero. Although I'd argue Shadow was never really that bad of a person, he was just a confused and frustrated soul driven by revenge for his past. Vegeta, on the other hand, was actually evil, starting off as a malicious alien obsessed with eternal life and taking over the universe. They both also have titles that demonstrate great importance. Shadow is a synthetic being that was created to be the ultimate life form, and Vegeta is the prince of all Saiyans. Like Sonic and Goku, they have super forms as well and are utilized in the same respective ways. Even Sonic and Shadow's relationship is somewhat similar to that of Goku and Vegeta, with both being allies with competitive tension as they have similar abilities and strength. Another big one, Silver and Trunks. Both are young men from an apocalyptic future that travel back to the past to prevent tragedy from striking. And, you know, if we ignore the time travel, there are actually plenty of differences between the two. Silver traveled back in time to kill Sonic, who he viewed as the catalyst for his horrible future. Trunks, the son of Vegeta, never viewed Goku as an enemy. In fact, he's heard nothing but good things about him since Goku has passed away due to a heart virus in the timeline that he's from. His main mission is to deliver medicine to Goku for the aforementioned virus and to give a warning about a pair of cyborgs that will eventually attack, and details about when and where they'll strike. As for Silver, he eventually learns that by going after Sonic, he was actually assisting the real villain that ends up triggering his apocalyptic future, and from that point on becomes a reoccurring ally, traveling to and from the future. Trunks helps Goku fight the threat he warned them about, but his good-natured intentions by time traveling actually meddled with the timeline and had major consequences for the present, allowing an even bigger threat to rise to power. Just like Sonic, Shadow, Goku, and Vegeta, Silver and Trunks also have super forms that they tap into the same way as the Hedgehogs and Saiyans before them. Fans will sometimes try to make connections to other characters as well, such as Amy Rose and Goku's wife Chi-Chi. But besides being a love interest with a hot temper, I don't think there's much substance here. Ever since the passing of Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama, we learned something from classic Sonic artist Judy Totoya that I don't think any other Sonic fan ever really saw coming. Sonic and Tails' relationship was modeled heavily after Piccolo and Son Gohan, which is surprising, because fans usually associate Sonic with Goku, and I don't think anyone before has ever really made this connection. For context, the evil Piccolo reluctantly works with Goku's son Gohan toward a greater goal, 
Over time, though, Piccolo starts to soften up and becomes a good guy due to Gohan's influence. Speaking of Piccolo, lots of fans will compare him to Knuckles. Both started off as antagonists turned friend, and each have a strong connection to the Dragon Balls and Chaos Emeralds. But beyond that, there are lots and lots of differences. Piccolo is the reincarnation of Piccolo Daimao, who is the evil half of Earth's god, or Kami, the creator of Earth's Dragon Balls. After Piccolo Daimao's death, the Piccolo that we know, also known as Ma Jr., has a strong interest in carrying out his father's evil legacy. But as time passes, he realizes he's his own person, capable of his own thoughts and feelings, and not just his father's minion. As for Knuckles, he's the guardian of the Master Emerald that lives in isolation, and due to his lack of experience in interacting with people, he's very naive and is tricked by Eggman, who lies and says that Sonic is his enemy. After Knuckles realizes that Eggman is the true bad guy, he becomes Sonic's ally, and then eventually a close friend. Unlike Piccolo, though, Knuckles was never evil. So, on paper, these characters being antagonists turned friend with the main character, and being closely tied to their respective series sought-after powerful crystal rocks, is enough for people to connect the dots. And I agree. But beyond that, I think our Echidna and Namekian friend are very different, and I think their similarities are just mostly coincidental. There are a few other things in Sonic here and there that are inspired by Dragon Ball 2. You know the Blue Sphere special stages that are in Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic Mania? The way Sonic runs across the stage is directly inspired by Goku running around Kaiosama's planet, chasing after his pet monkey, Bubbles. There's also a lot of small similarities that can be chalked up to coincidences as well, such as the headpiece that Sonic wears in Episode 2 of Sonic X, that heavily resembles a scouter from Dragon Ball Z. In the Metarex saga of Sonic X, Sonic's human friend Chris ends up being turned back into a child, sort of like how Goku was turned back into a child in Dragon Ball GT, or even Dragon Ball Daima. Saiyans have the unique power to transform into giant monkeys known as Ozaru. Sonic has a very similar transformation, called the Werehog. But I would say that this one is definitely a coincidence rather than a direct inspiration, since it's just a werewolf trope, which even Goku transforming into the Ozaru is inspired by. If anything, the Werehog is more similar to Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece rather than Goku due to his stretchy arms and oddly similar attacks. We can't ignore the whole evil doppelganger trope either, as both series are guilty of making antagonists in the protagonist's image. In Sonic, we have all sorts of robots that Dr. Robotnik has created, the most famous being Metal Sonic. Even Shadow is considered a dark version of Sonic for a short time. In the Archie comics, Sonic has an evil version called Anti-Sonic, which is just Sonic with sunglasses and a greaser jacket. Eventually, he does get his own distinct appearance and a whole new name, called Scourge. Ever since the Archie comics were cancelled and the IDW comics took over, the new character Surge seems to have been directly inspired by Scourge, in both name and appearance. And in Dragon Ball, there are plenty of evil Gokus. First up being Turles from Dragon Ball Z Movie 3, which is basically a fun little glimpse at what Goku would probably be like had he not hit his head and effectively reset his entire personality. In Dragon Ball Super, Zamasu possesses Goku's body, effectively becoming THE evil Goku. And of course, Captain Ginyu tried stealing Goku's body earlier in Dragon Ball Z as well, but even though changing bodies with his opponents is his main thing, he, for some reason, was never able to get the hang of harnessing Goku's power like Zamasu was. Granted, these evil versions of Sonic and Goku are both very different, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Now, back to some more similarities. In Sonic Frontiers, Sonic was able to use a more powerful version of Super Sonic, known as Super Sonic 2. Which is pretty on the nose with Super Saiyan 2 from Dragon Ball. In this form, Super Sonic 2 doesn't look all that different from regular Super Sonic, except now he has light blue eyes, an additional aura, and has a red outline and some lightning sparks. In Dragon Ball, when Goku transforms into Super Saiyan 2, his appearance is also largely unchanged. His hair stands up a bit more, and his aura now has lightning sparks as well. The mostly unchanged appearance, the lightning, and the name all make this extremely similar to that of Dragon Ball. Makes me wonder though, what's Super Sonic 3 gonna look like? 
As time went on, Sonic would eventually branch off some of its Dragon Ball inspirations further and make them its own. For example, Super Sonic originally had green eyes in Sonic 3, which is the same eye color for Super Saiyans. By Sonic Adventure, Super Sonic's eyes had become red, which is actually very similar to the prototype color scheme Toriyama had come up with for Super Saiyan Goku. As mentioned earlier, the Chaos Emeralds, while fairly different from the Dragon Balls already, now each have their own unique power, making them even more different than before. And Sonic's personality is a wild card, it just depends on the game or even the media, and even though he's directly inspired by Piccolo and Goku, he is still very different from both. Besides Dragon Ball, there's also Akira Toriyama's famous work that came before it called Dr. Slump, which also seems to have influenced Sonic in a few ways. For example, the logo with the ring and the stars with the ribbon from Dr. Slump's opening seems to have influenced our Hedgehog Friends logos from the classic games. Another thing I must address is an infamous panel of Aurele outrunning Sonic from the manga The Brief Return of Dr. Slump by Takao Koyama and Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru. Akira Toriyama didn't draw this, nor was he really involved. He just merely gave his approval. But then again, that doesn't always hold the weight some fans think it does, as he also did the same thing with Dragon Ball GT and other little projects. In other words, I wouldn't consider this spin-off manga canon to Dr. Slump or Dragon Ball at all. Lots of fans spread this around social media, claiming it's from the original Dr. Slump manga, and that Akira Toriyama drew it. And that just simply isn't true. And just a fun little tidbit here, but beyond Sonic, Dr. Slump has even gone on to influence Mario. The way he runs with his arms to the side, along with his winged cap, are both direct inspirations from Dr. Slump, which are basically one-to-one -one with Aurelay's iconic run when she mimics an airplane. There are many more examples, but these are the big ones I wanted to talk about, especially since we got more information within the last few years. Another notable mention is Alex Kidd, the original Sega mascot before Sonic. And sure, Alex Kidd never took off like Sonic did, but he plays a very important role in Sega's history. Alex Kidd's first game, released in 1986, Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Kotaro Hayashida, the creator of Alex Kidd, mentioned that it was supposed to be a Dragon Ball game to begin with. However, there were some licensing complications, and so Sega reworked what they had into their own original idea. So, without Dragon Ball, there'd be no Alex Kidd. And without Alex Kidd, there'd be no Sonic. Another thing I must mention is that Sonic designer Naoto Oshima mentioned that while he was designing Sonic, he wasn't thinking about Goku. Just Bill Clinton. However, Toriyama inspired Oshima to start his art career because he loved his manga. It's really cool how things work out like that. That being said, which series do you like more? Sonic or Dragon Ball? I've loved both since I was a little kid, and I know I wouldn't be the same person I am today without either of these amazing franchises. Is there a connection between Sonic and Dragon Ball that you've made that you don't think others have yet? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time. Matane!